Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Tiffany and you are watching The Most Enthusiastic Homemaker. Today, I'm really excited to share with you a project my husband Chris and I worked on over the summer. We redid our old dining room table to be my sewing slash craft work table. And we laid rulers in along the edges. It's so cool. And I've seen so many of these tables being thrown out and I see a lot of these tables on their way out. So if you can come across one, here's a fun way to repurpose it and make it last a lot longer. To start this project off, Chris is just stabilizing underneath the table with these two pieces of wood we had left over from a leaf that used to be stored underneath it. It was attached, but we took it off because we knew we weren't going to use it and it made the table so heavy. Um, it would just be easier to do it this way instead of keeping all that bulk underneath. Once he gets this secured, he's going to set up his router, his straight edge, and two clamps and he's going to do some measurements to make sure he gets the ruler that we're going to use inlaid perfectly. You can see here, it just needs to be a little bit of thickness, not even half an inch. I've laid out my straight edge, set the depth of my router, so the bit is only raised up as much as the depth of that ruler. Now it's time to rip this out. This router is the coolest tool. It's very handy when it comes to doing projects like inlays. And once you have your first side set up to exactly the depth that you want for your ruler, go ahead and measure and remeasure for your second side. also want to take a second to point out you should definitely wear all of your safety gear if you decide to use a tool like this. It's so loud and there's a lot of debris that flies in the air while you're using it. So make sure to wear your headphones, safety goggles, and a mask to keep yourself from inhaling too much wood. Once the inlay was all cut out, we went ahead and sanded the table down with a sander. I didn't catch it on film, but we also filled in a few nicks on the top of the table with wood filler. And then while all this was happening, I decided to include those two chairs in my paint project as well. We used this cover stain primer. It's amazing. It's so sticky, especially when you're dealing with things that were finished for lack of a better term, kind of cheap when it's not super amazing hardwood you can use this and make anything stick to it. So it's kind of sticky, it kind of smells, but it's definitely worth the effort in order to get your paint to stick for a lot longer. There are a lot of paints out there that claim to be paints and primers, but at the end of the day, you get a much better job if you use a nice sticky primer underneath your project. <laughs> Once everything was primed and dry, I went over all this furniture with some regular white eggshell paint. I think we had it for our walls, <laughs> but it worked fine for this project. And I put lots of extra coats on the tabletop. So even after I moved the tabletop back into my office, I put another coat of paint on it. I knew I would be working at this table and wiping it down a lot and I didn't want the paint to be worn through very quickly. And I also let it dry for many days. I think I let it dry for four days before we put the rulers in. So 
So while I was letting that paint dry, I went ahead and recovered the cushions for these chairs. All you have to do is flip the chair over. It'll unscrew really easily with a regular screwdriver. Pop all the staples off from the fabric you have already. Cut it off, do the best you can. And then cut the fabric that you want to use. Velvet is really great, so is canvas a lot of times. And it's so cheap, it's so easy. It's such a fun way to update the look of your chairs. And I highly recommend doing this if you get bored with your furniture and don't wanna replace it. So you can see me here just stapling as tight as I can and making it look as clean and finished on the other side as I can. And then I just went in and replaced all the screws. Be careful though, don't screw too much with the um, screwdriver because you don't want to lose the sturdiness of the screw in the cushion, if that makes sense. So just be aware of that as you're working on it. It'll make sense to you if you actually work on this project, I bet. This project is turning out so beautiful. I'm so happy with it and I'm excited to see the rulers put in. Once Chris came in to put the rulers in, he cut holes in the ruler where we wanted the screws to go just so it would be nice and secure against the table. And he used a drill press, but you can use a regular drill to drill the holes into the ruler. So he drilled screw size holes all the way through the ruler. And then just very shallow at the top, he drilled a little bit of a recess where the screw head would fit so that the ruler would lay nice and flat and it wouldn't catch on my hands or fabric that I was working with and mess up my project. The next thing I'm gonna tell you that he did was saw off the rulers at the zero point. So he had to make a little bit of an angle, as you can see here, to make sure that they started at zero and my measurements would be accurate. So that's just something you wanna walk, watch out for as well. I'm happy we did it this way. It makes measuring a lot less stressful for me. And since I'm mostly dealing with big, bigger measurements at this table, it works out. I am so thrilled with how this table and chairs turned out. I think it looks way better in white than it did as this worn out wood. The wood was actually very pretty, but it had just seen so much abuse. It needed a new life. I also redid this cabinet that I found on the side of the road. And if you're interested in the process I used to redo this cabinet, I definitely suggest checking out my roadside furniture salvage video that I'll link in the description below. But it's the same process as I used for this hutch that you're seeing here. So definitely check out that video if you're interested in learning how to have some cute furniture in your house without paying too much money for it. Thank you so much for watching today, friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give this video a like if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see any more of my homemaking videos. And I really hope this inspires you to set up a fun workspace in your house or where you live. I will see you soon, friends. Bye for now.